There we go. Okay, couldn't get my mic unmuted. How's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's having a wonderful day today. So let me just get this set up properly, because I don't right now. Pretty good, playing Octopath 2. How is that, Draco? I feel like the camera's not picking me up very well. There we go. But I hope everybody's having a good day today. Uh, we're going to do some world building today, just as we did before. Or, I say before, just as we did last week. Let's get to my second character. Nice. I won't ask for spoilers, because I do want to play that in the future. Um, just a matter of getting money for it. Because I be broke. So, let me go ahead and jump us into what we got going on here. There we go. World building, my brain is going to melt today. That's all right, Babu. So, we're going to um, do more of what we did early stream. Yeah, this is going to be our new schedule. Like, D&D is still going to be in its usual time. D&D with Jade tomorrow is still going to be in its usual time. Because um, that's going to be over on her channel still. But for, like, our other content, we're going to be doing... We're going to start doing earlier streams. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully things will turn out really fun for this. So, um, for this, for this world building stream, I want to expand, I don't want to expand on what we had already done, because last session we had done, or I said, yeah, last session is a good way to put it. Last session we had done campaign setup for a low level party. So now we're going to go one step up. Now we're going to go, now we're going to go one step up. We're still before mid-level, but we're not quite considered low-level. So this would roughly be your 5 to 9 level range. And so for this one, we're going to come up with a major city. We're going to come up with a major city. And sticking to our prior rules, and I have a command for it now. It's going to be command world build, which I'll go ahead and slap in the chat right now. There we go. Major city, yes. We're going to start working on ideas for an antagonist and quest inside of a major city, as opposed to a smaller, in the last case, it was a farming community. So yeah, this is going to be interesting. So um, rules as we had it before, uh, we're going to be focusing on a, I don't want to say focusing, but when you're throwing ideas out there, keep either modern or fantasy in mind. Because with, with a modern fantasy idea, you can adjust to a high fantasy idea or to a science fantasy idea or to just a science fiction idea it can be adapted as needed so modern fantasy and we'll play it by ear from there so what kind of problem would a party be having well not a party what kind of problem would this major city be having uh, and we come to the first question on our list who is your main antagonist? Who is our primary antagonist for this major city? And keep in mind, if we're talking D&D, we're talking between the levels of 5 and 9. Leader of said smuggling ring? I don't know, smuggling see smuggling ring seems kind of low tier when we're trying to establish heroes of a city. Because the way these progressions break down is 
by level five, you should be a here. You should be local heroes. You should be, you should be well known for this small particular town. By the time you hit level ten, you should be well known heroes of a particular city. By the time you hit level fifteen, you should be heroes of a country. And by the time you hit level 20, you should be heroes of the world. Could be smuggling in something incredibly dangerous, like a species of creature that shouldn't be there. I, th I think if we're going to go down the route of leader of smuggling ring and trying to smuggle in things that are... So who would this leader be, is the question. Who would this leader be, and why would the city recognize them? Otherwise, it's just a quest. If we're focusing on the criminal route, we're looking at someone... If we're looking at the criminal route, we're looking at someone who is head of a particular organization, but it would have to be a well-known organization. And if they're a smuggling ring, then by nature, they should not be well-known. Head of one of the local guilds? Okay, that's a possibility. a corrupt adventurous guild leader who's trying to inflate business by smuggling in dangerous creatures. Okay, I like that. That's a good one. Go ahead and get my font here. Why is it in blue? of Adventurer's Guild. Okay. What's their name? Actually, name isn't important. Head of Adventurer's Guild. That's good enough. A name can be more specific depending on the setting that you're playing. So, what are they trying to do? They're trying to smuggle in creatures... Goods to inflate adventurer work. What will happen if they fail? <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Why is he doing this? What is the repercussions of him not doing these things? <laughs> Excuse me. I have to get this out of me. Excuse me. If they fail, the Adventures League could go out of business and he'd be out of a profit. Okay, so this would be an ongoing operation then, right? Okay. if not years. Okay. 
So, here's my follow-up question to this. What are your MacGuffins? What are your MacGuffins for this, for this adventure? What things does the party need to interact with? in order to stop this plot or get involved in this plot. Because to me, this is not a MacGuffin adventure. This is go in and kill some people. of illegal creatures or goods, statements, documents from the smugglers. I'm waiting to see if there's any additional information because you have a MacGuffin and this is supposed to be the antagonist that is going to make them heroes of the city. This isn't going to make them heroes of the city. This is going to make them heroes of the Adventuring Guild or perhaps heroes of a certain subsect of individuals, but it's not going to make them heroes of the city. Think bigger. Perhaps it is... Perhaps there is an entity who is looking to destroy the city, or an entity that is looking to, um... While the party could go in and murder everyone involved, they can't actually prove, if not counting magic, then top brass of the city might arrest the party instead. Again, interesting quest, not going to make them... An interesting quest, and this could be its own quest in a subsect of this, but this is not what's going to make them heroes. This isn't what's going to get them recognition within the city. And like, oh, hey, you did something that the guards could do if they weren't fucking lazy. Think bigger. Think bigger. Because it's important to recognize, and, and like, let's not beat around the bush on this. If you're playing D&D &D characters, what the fuck kind of leader of a smuggling ring or adventurer's guild is going to be a threat to a party at level 9? And the best I could think of when you're throwing a scenario like that is a vampire. Not even a spellcasting vampire, just a bog standard vampire. My brain be empty after staying up all night? Then you shouldn't do that, Artie. One. Like if we're looking at if we're looking at villains, we're looking at basically the same level as adult dragon. Yeah, we're look we're looking at something that would be equivalent to the threat of a large dragon. So something that would be an issue for this party to try and deal with. Because, again, this seems like a good quest, like a good side quest, but it's not what's going to make them heroes. Problem is trying to keep the setting agnostic? Don't make it agnostic. Anything can be adapted to anything else. You just have to be able to figure out where the pieces fit.
Yield Leader is a dragon in disguise. With as many professional monster hunters that come through there, I find that unlikely. Because, I mean... Let's be honest. <laughs> Like, every, every game system has a class or a feature, and it's like, oh, you're full of shit. I can tell that at a glance. In my Pathfinder game that, I've, that I'm playing on Thursdays, we have a barbarian that can automatically sense if something is a shapeshifter. Just instantly sense if something is a shapeshifter. Or if something is not in its true form. Let's, let's forego modern fantasy then. Let's just say high fantasy. Let's just say high fantasy. Because we're already doing that anyway when we say Adventurer's Guild. Maybe the guild leader is working with a dragon and the prophet goes towards building the dragon's horde. Dragon such powerful monster dwelling somewhere nearby has developed a hero complex that routinely sends in monsters or manipulates groups from the city to put it in danger so they can save it. Now that is pretty interesting, Artie. Okay. Hero obsessed dragon or other greater being. Because you can still attribute that to a sci fi setting or a modern setting if you would like to. I'm pretty sure that's actually the plot of um, Split. Split? Uh, one, of, one of those movies. Glass? I forget. Alright, so the hero obsessed dragon is trying to feed their hero complex. What happens if they fail to feed their hero complex? Do they. Do they throw a tantrum? Do they decide to destroy the city? Do they. What happens? So if they fail to feed their hero complex, I'm not even going to say hot complex, I'm going to say hero addiction. Because if they succeed in feeding their hero complex, they continue to need to manipulate greater disasters, right? If they fail to feed their hero addiction, Do they then become the disaster? Latch on to another obsession, potentially a much more dangerous one? Technically, that would be correct. <clears throat> What happens to the city if this dragon cannot 
if this creature cannot feed their hero addiction. So I feel like you guys who are sleep deprived <laughs> are kind of just spinning your wheels here. So I am going to step in here. When your depends honestly if the dragon is written in such a way they can see the city is disposable and raise it to start over. That's a that's a good way to do it. Cuz when you're coming up with an antagonist and I and I while I admit the hero obsessed creature feeding their addiction is a is a really cool idea. Excuse me. There should be stakes involved and there should be a means for the heroes to intercept. How you write the creature beyond that is entirely up to the DM. You think they would turn against the city like the Avengers are getting better at acting against the creatures and they're needed less and less and they're spiraling? think about this for a second. Ah, hang on a second. I'm going I'm going to adjust what we have here. I'm going to adjust what we have here. What if we have the hero obsessed dragon? Everyone here has slept a total of 6 hours combined. Our wheels are puffing. That's fair. What if, what if what they're trying to do is not just feed their hero addiction? What if what they're trying to do is... Fabricate heroes. There would be another rival group of adventurers in town that are actively going through the tasks that the dragon wants to have completed in complete separation of the party. And if they fail... Oop, I moved that on accident. No, nope, that's not the one I want. Give me the other one. Give me the other one. Okay, can I undo, please? There we go. He's fabricating his own heroes to to further increase his own reputation when he inevitably kills them. He's trying to fabricate himself to be as much of a threat as possible. Still on the monster smuggling ring where in desperation they would release all the monsters they smuggled, each dangerous monster being its own quest as it's released in the wild to cause havoc, but each monster leaves subtle clues as the true problem of the smuggling ring itself. It's thinking way different than seeing the heroes he fabricates his treasures to to eventually claim them as his own. It would depend entirely on the on the type of dragon. Um like it would depend entirely on the lore of the universe that you use and the type of dragon, but yeah. 
basically an individual, basically a, a entity putting these people up on a pedestal specifically for the purpose of cutting them down to make themselves seem like more of a threat. So what will happen if if they uh, don't get to fabricate their heroes? Well, then the dragon will just attack the city in, in, in the hole anyway. Raise the city. Generally, when I hear hero complex, I think trying to be the hero. Yeah. Which is why I wanted to change the term from complex to addiction. Uh, regardless as to what we call, uh, what are we calling this city? I'm going to reach my font size for this one. What do we call this city? City needs a name. A city needs some form. I'm just going to write down um, city for the time being. So, within the city, or around the city, there will be multiple population centers. Uh, we'll get to these here in a little bit. Yeah, we'll get to these here in a little bit, um, but let's go ahead and go over what the plot points we have, right? So, the first one we have is the Adventurer's Guild. Who is using it and why? The Adventurer's Guild. Well, it's not. This isn't an adventure site. This is. This would be a population center, actually. Excuse me. Because this would be a point of interest. But it's not. But it's not an adventurer site. It's not an adventure site. It's not where things are going to go down. For venturing merch some mercenaries, obviously. Guild leader is fabricating a party of heroes at the dragons. Quest. Setting up seemingly difficult missions and rigging them to boost reputation. There we go. Alright, what else we have? 
Well, hold on. If our party keeps beating the smuggled animals and other dangers before the dragon gets to it, would it become angry and angry before lashing out at its rival, us? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Which is what you would call the climax to this particular story. So, we come to the, uh, we'll come to the other population centers and and adventure sites as we come as we come up with things. What is our? <coughs> Excuse me. What is our MacGuffins? Well, our first MacGuffin has to be the Adventurers Guild. Uh, Adventurers Guild. I can't talk. The Adventurers Guild Master. Although this isn't so much, although this particularly wouldn't actually be a MacGuffin. They need the Adventurers Guild Master and they need the party. Guild Master, the fabricated party. They need control over the. Uh, threats over the city. I can imagine the dragon seeing the central party as a B squad of sorts, whereas the NPC party you mentioned earlier meant to be his intended heroes. I, when I, I'll be honest. As I'm writing this thing in my head, as we're going along, I'm immediately picturing the dragon as just Vince McMahon. And he's like, no, these are the top guys. I don't care that this person is actually talented and actually skilled and actually has ability and actually is a draw and people actually want to see them fight. No, these are the people. These are the people that everyone is going to consider the fucking best because I said so. And if they want someone else, we're just going to ruin their fucking image. The dragon is basically running an adventuring racket, and I think that's that's really fucking funny to me. So, in order to keep that the, the creature's plan in motion, they need the assistance of the adventurer's guildmaster. They need their fabricated party. They need control over the threats in the city. We need a fourth. We need at least we need at least a fourth. What else would what else would the dragon need to keep this plan in motion? I honestly don't think we need more than that, do we? Because if they have control over the guildmaster, the party, and over threats of the city, the rest of their plan goes without a hitch. So then, as a party, what can we do to intercept these things? I believe one of our MacGuffins should be the fabricated party. There's probably at least one party member that has that has some degree of sense over the others. But for our other MacGuffins, we'll need, let's see, how is the, how is, would the Adventurer's Guildmaster be involved in the fabrication of the party? Ah, I have an idea on that. Adventuring requests. So, since the guildmaster would not be directly controlling the creatures that are inside the city, he has to he has to 
make sure that the party members are getting the quest that he wants them to get, he would have to, um, what's what I'm looking for? Filter the requests that are coming in and make sure that these party members don't end up getting, um, end up getting like a lower level or a lower danger request or to have them take on a quest that's too powerful for them. He would actually have to go through and censor through um, what requests is coming in and make sure that they get the ones that, that he wants them to take. Control over the threats in the city. Now, for this, I have two things in mind. Listen, man, this dragon and the bald guy in the guild are sending us on dangerous quests and paying us an exposure. I know I'm not stupid enough to keep going. Could y'all beat them up real quick? <laughs> That's fucking funny. I think the dragon would have two other corrupt individuals in their employ that would actually have this plan come to fruition. The first of which, in order to make the monsters easier for the party to defeat, they would need someone who has a direct control over these creatures. So I'm thinking an enchanter. An enchanter, a controller, someone who is capable of directing the battle. Um, behind the scenes. Specialized collars or a magical seal over the threats that the party needs to break. Oh, that's a good one, actually. Uh, how would this particular item be useful? Uh, it could cause a domination effect. Yeah, it would cause a domination effect. Which does make it useful on its own. And my other... The domination of, yeah, like direct control over a creature or an individual that you place the collar on. Now, if someone is controlling the creatures, you would need someone else to gather the creatures. So we're looking for a summoner or a poacher, a hunter of some variety, who is capable of ensnaring, capturing, tricking, or even summoning these creatures. So it's your supplier. A monster supplier. What can we fill in a blank for the monster supplier? Party that could either destroy the collars and gain 
the threats as allies, depending on how innocent they were before being controlled. That is a possibility. That is a possibility. Trying to think of what we can do as a as an actual MacGuffin for our monster supplier. Cause I feel like the actual supplier would be a mini boss. He's not going to aid the party in any way. Oh, hang on. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A monster ledger. If it's someone who's very trained, or not trained, but extremely experienced in dealing with creatures, then it makes sense that they would have a record of... information regarding the creatures themselves, any weaknesses they would have, techniques that they've used to capture them. And without that ledger, without having that information on hand, it's likely that this tracker or captor or capturer would have to start from scratch. They're B series, essentially. Yes. Okay. So we have so we have some plot points here that we can now dig down, that we can now flesh out uh, what our adventuring sites are. So, for example, we have. We want to mark down the Adventures Guild as a population center, <clears throat> but it is now also a adventure site because you're going to have to get in there in order to get those documents. This particular purpose was created because the dragon is paying the guild leader for this front. Uh, let's, I'm not going to say paying. The dragon invested in this front and is receiving kickbacks. from adventurer jobs. There we go. So, uh, there's that. Uh, we also have the enchanter. Or this, where, uh, how, how, uh, how is the party going to obtain the controller? What is the quest that they'll have to do in order to obtain the controller? In my mind, in my mind, we're looking at a, we're looking at some form of spellcaster. Yeah, in my mind, we're looking at some form of spellcaster. Um, 
they probably have a repository somewhere. Maybe somewhere it's not supposed to be. Um, since they have to send the monsters into the city somehow, it's entirely likely that this would be a location already within the city. So where would be a relatively safe place that one could house various forms of monsters and could potentially smuggle monsters into the city through? And I hate to continue using the sewers, but... Sewers is about as good as an option as we're going to get. I'm going to call it the Growling Cistern. housing creatures here and coordinating with the yep. Thank you, Bug Boy, for the hydrate. The controller would be housing creatures there and coordinating with the guildmaster to fabricate monster attacks. And the stretch. Ah, oh, thank you. How are you today? How is it created? How was this growling cistern, as its, as its name became, created? I'm doing well. Yourself? I'm doing pretty good. We're doing our world building stream. And what we're doing today is we are just doing some final prep for tomorrow, guys. What we're doing is we're planning out uh, a section of this campaign between, if we're running D&D, between the levels of 5 and 9. So that by the end of it, the, he the, the party becomes heroes of a major city. And <clears throat> right now we have the idea of this hero-obsessed dragon who is just feeding their hero addiction and fabricating a group of heroes to come into power for them to eventually murder. Not the party. Not the party. But a group of heroes that the plan is that the dragon is going to murder to elevate their own name. Uh, however, if the party is killed off or their plans fail, they're going to raise the city. Uh, we have it set up so that and just pit, like pitching ideas between chat. They're working alongside the Adventurer's Guildmaster to make sure that the fabricated party gets the necessary jobs in order to continue to build their influence. They are raising opponents to have a worthy fight. They're raising opponents to make it seem like it's going to be a worthy fight when really they're just going to come in and dominate the situation. Just that the central party is like the B squad screw with the part dragon's plan. Yeah, pretty much. Um, they have, uh, yeah. So the adventurers guild master is working, is manipulating a party, this this side party, this rival party, if you will, into taking on jobs that are significantly easier than they should be. How there is dragon, by the way? Up for interpretation. Depends entirely on settings. Well, we're not making it D&D &D specific. And you could also, like... And, and we're also adapting it to where, like, yeah, you could just put this in a modern setting and switch out the dragon with, like, some rich guy who wants to paint himself as a villain for funsies. We use the word dragon, but it's really any -E BBEG. Correct. Um, but yeah, in order to get these events to unfold in the manner that they that in the manner that they need to, um, they need to be working. the The dragon, in this case, is working alongside the guildmaster. Is working alongside an individual, uh, potentially some form of spellcaster that is controlling the creatures, and an individual that is rounding up and collecting the creatures in order to send into the city to fight. And we're kind of, and we're working out what our MacGuffins are, are not our MacGuffins, sorry, because those are our MacGuffins. Those are our MacGuffins. Slaver, essentially, 
Yes. Um, I drew up the conclusion that the controller is using a cistern, like a large cistern in the sewers as kind of a place to set up their, their, uh, whatever creature is going to be sent in next. And just by reputation, it's been, it's been called the growling cistern. cistern because the controller needs a secluded place within the city walls in which they can effectively smuggle in monsters and release them into a random place in the city sewers make the most sense but it would also explain why there is mysteriously no thieves guild in this major city because the monsters ate them all So we have the Adventurer's Guild with the Growling Cistern. Um, we could also, as a, as a plot point leading up to the Growling Cistern, we could have the Abandoned Thieves Guild. There's a remnants of an old Thieves Guild. Vets the players into finding enough investigate. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yeah, I can't have killed everyone. Someone always gets out or knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a couple of people who were out on jobs when it happened. But that's how the party even learns about it. building a reputation for themselves. When a monster destroyed the place, only three survivors. I think that's good enough. I think that's a good round number. It's enough for the party to bump into somebody or if they're going down a different plot line. Or on one of their quests from the Adventurers Guild, they they come across this. Now the interesting idea is if the B Squad learns about it and tries to reestablish the Thieves Guild, that would be an interesting that would be a diff, uh, an interesting take. Any idea on the monster? By the way, sounds like possible Umber Hulk. Uh, I feel like whatever monster it would have been, it would have been dealt with by the planned party, for lack of a better word. Is it raining? Oh, it's just noisy outside. And I'm gonna switch up the music because this is a little um this is this is nice, but I'm looking for something a little more um Oh here we go. Let's do this one. That is uh not what I was expecting. I'm a little disappointed, I'll be honest. Alright, let's find a different one. Oh, here we go. Let's do this one. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, we're going to rock with that for a while. Find some different music. 
May I suggest the song Session Zero from Bardify on YouTube? Oh, this works. I am actually using Bardify, yes. Bardify is a lot of great music. And much better than just the generic stuff I've been using. I should not have had peanut butter before the stream today. Oh my god. It was, that was a mistake. <clears throat> Alright, so we got room for like three more adventuring sites. What else we got? Uh, let's see. We have the Adventurers Guild. We have the Abandoned Thieves Guild. We have the Growling Sister. He needs some milk. He needs some milk! Probably some milk would be nice. I can't afford milk right now. I'm I'm goddamn broke. Um what do what do Sorry, I'm just kind of scrolling back and forth trying to figure out what do. Um So we need um we need where the collector, let's say, is pulling in their monsters. How does the players get this monster ledger that they've been using to collect various creatures? What is that location? Because they're inevitably going to have to fight whoever is there. Probably an outside trader or source from outside the walls. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Perhaps a mill outside of town? Wouldn't a mill be generally used, though? Like, by people who use the mill to make... Uh, who break down grain? Not if it's an abandoned or a front business? If it was if it was abandoned and if it was a proper if it was abandoned if it was a proper uh, building or I'm sorry if it was a building that could be used for the for the farming industry it would not be abandoned for very long there would be a reason why people wouldn't go to it because inevitably someone would just buy it and try to use it so either it'd have to be a reason why people don't go there or Perhaps an underground river? Well, I was I was gonna follow up on using the mill, and it's like, well, what reason would someone not have for going there? Well, haunted, but that would only apply to like the the most superstitious and poorest of people that would be willing to buy it. But if you claim that a demon was summoned there, that's an entirely different bag of worms. Because not even rich people will fuck with that. Same demon that maybe attacked the thieves? Possibly. Possibly. That may be how the story goes. It also may lead the party in the right direction. We could also claim that the collector is himself a demon. So that the story actually sticks. today. There we go. A demon that may or may not be a minion of the collector or dragon. Most likely the dragon in this case. Perhaps the demon is the collector. The collector is just a guise. Possibly. It's, it's open enough to where you can adapt it as necessary for however strong your party is. 
or however many people are in your party. Like for a four person party, the collector I would say is probably just a really good ranger. But if you're talking like seven to eight party members, no, it's a demon. It's just straight up a demon. How is it created? I think it would be additionally cute that despite the fact everyone believes that the demon summon there went on a rampage and murdered several people, no one actually saw the thing. Nobody saw the thing. Like, not one goddamn soul. This is fun, and the stuff I love most about being a DM. Yeah, th yeah. I thought it'd be a neat uh, stream idea, and it, it's working. So, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so we have the Adventurer's Guild, where they have to go and get the filtered or foraged uh, jobs that the guild leader is creating. We have the Growling Cistern, where the where the dominated creatures are being kept. We have the Abandoned Thieves, the Abandoned, the Abandoned Thieves Guild, uh, which will lead as a clue to either the Growling Cistern or the Demon's Mill. Uh, what else can we do to kind of poke players in the right direction? Um, if they intend to go after the party. If they're going after the party, how do they meet up with the party? Maybe there's an instance where the creatures get out of control, where, where sudden, for whatever reason... Um, also, leave a trail of breadcrumbs related to a covered-up murder. That's a possibility. Um, what kind of adventure would the fabricated party be on that could go wrong because the controller fucks up or doesn't plan for something? And the party, and, and the actual party, is there to f help fix the problem. Rampage of monster destroying the downtown area. Classic super story. Well, that's the finale. That's the finale, and that's probably going to happen during the scenario at some point. Perhaps going to clear out a dig site dungeon, but get in over their head. It needs to be uh, evacuated. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, so why don't we call that... Uh, let's see. If uh, Why would the tunnel be there? Is it a ruin? Is it, an, is it a... Um... Is it a ruin? Is it a cave that's naturally inhabited by monsters? Is it a uh, is it a mine shaft? An uncovered old ruin. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Something old that got rediscovered. Yeah, that's a good idea. What kind of ruin? Just kind of coming up with a name for it. Deserter's Clutch. Well, I'm thinking, what is the reason why, like, when I'm planning out this ruin, I'm thinking, what is the reason why this particular place uh, doesn't go as planned or, or does or, or for the party to actually get involved here. I would have to say that 
Perhaps the ruin has some sort of anti-enchantment, uh, anti-enchantment uh, uh, field over it. Like, disrupts enchantment magic. So the creature that is being dominated and being trained, um, or are forced to behave in a certain manner while fighting the fabricated party, is not able to do so. they woke something up that was too much to handle, like a curse? Possibly. A secret hold or keep created by an ancient lord. magic. I'm back with two bologna sandwiches. I miss anything? We got a lot of stuff done real quick there, Babu. We have a few adventure plots now. So in addition to the Adventures Guild and the Growling Cistern, we have the Abandoned Thieves Guild, uh, we have the Demon's Mill, and we have Deserter's Clutch, which is a ruin. Which I'm actually going to go ahead and add on to that, because that's supposed to be a ruin. If we, and if we like, we can come up with one more, but I think we're good with those five. Because those are our main plot points. And we can, and you can on the fly other stuff on the side. Okay. So what, what else do we have here? Uh, we have the other population centers. So we have the Adventures Guild as a population center. Perhaps a place where the monsters are being taken from, like a swamp or something. Potentially, uh, I would consider that surrounding area. So uh, that really depends on where would this city be located. And I, I think the surrounding area uh, that the monsters are being taken from is actually going to be more dependent on what type of dragon you want to have. If this is a city on the coast, you would have it be a blue dragon. If it was a city on the blue dragon, why does that not sound right when I say it out loud? I feel like it is, though. Blue dragons live in the ocean, right? I'm not crazy. If the city resides in the swamp, it would be a black dragon. If it's in the mountains, you would... If it's in mountainous terrain, it could be a red or a white dragon. Green dragon is what I'm thinking of. Brass and bronze? I mean, those are good dragons. So them plotting to kill off adventurers doesn't track. What are things that we can have going on that will link all of this together? Because we have all the plot points relatively linked together, but what is our introductions? What is the means to the end? Mm -hmm. 
What quest can the party take part in? Oh, a Draconic Cult. That's a good one. That's a fantastic one. I'm going to say Cobalt. Fuck it. Cobalt Draconic Cult harassing farmers? Cobalts are worshipping the dragon in question. That's a good one. That's, that's, that's really fucking easy. I like that. Uh, what else we got? That's better. I'm actually also thinking that the only reason why the quest would be available to the party members, especially if it's through the Adventurers Guild, is that they are drawing attention to the dragon. These are introductions to the Adventurers Guild, or what? Quests from the guild? Potentially. They can be either quests from the guild or quests that would lead the party to the guild. Quests that could potentially lead the party to this scenario that's going on. Or side quests that could that could point them in the direction of other clues. So yeah, we have kobolds worshipping the dragon in question and drawing attention to the dragon. Um, what else do we have? How about a quest that points us in the direction of the Abandoned Thieves Guild? There's a panic or crime in town that party can intervene on, then Group A swoops in and saves the day, making Group B feel robbed of glory. That's not bad, Bug Boy. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make it a, a general monster attack because this would be a fabricated attack if it's going to be in the city. Uh, what about a quest that leaves them to that abandoned thieves guild? What about a grizzled mercenary in the meat in a bar spinning tails for some copper pieces? Uh, that's, an, that's an introduction. What's the actual quest? And I would think, okay, how about... How about I'm gonna I'm gonna use a similar introduction for that. In the bar, you find a older woman who is just going around bugging adventures, asking people to uh, asking people to find uh, a keepsake of her son who was killed in the thieves guild. Remember why I said a fetch quest? Yeah, a fetch quest. But something that would not be dictated by the guild in particular. Because why would why would the Adventurers Guild want to be linked to it? Or why would the Adventurers Guild want to advertise that they're linked to it? If they're involved. I thought this could be a side mission they could bump into if they go to the bar, but that works too. Yeah.
what else do we have? Um, is there... What, what would, what would be a quest that could point them to the... What would be a quest that would point them towards the Demon's Mill? What, what, what quest could we potentially come up with that would point them towards the Demon's Mill? Um... Because that's our collector. And I feel like Monster Attack, if if our party investigates it correctly, could put them in the direction of the Growling Cistern. Perhaps stories of a summon demon of the past and they are sent to get evidence, planted evidence. Who would plant the evidence? The collector? Or... Oh! Hang on! Actually, Bug Boy, I'm gonna recycle an idea that you actually threw at me. I'm gonna recycle an idea that you did actually throw at me, and it was the, um... The Grizzled Mercenary Spinning Tails. Uh, well, no, just like, just kind of piecing things together. He's not going to be connected to Demon's Mill. He's going to be connected to the Adventurer's Guild. for typos I type faster my brain can process and I don't look at the keys as I type it's same same so the grizzled mercenary would be a member of an adventurer party who was explicitly killed off just sent off to die because they were more competent than the heroes Conspiracy, yes! Grills of that possibly recruitable with the right wheels greased when the final battle comes later? Possibly! Never say no to it, never say no to something like that. Alright. That's that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, did you put up an idea for Demon's Mill? Um, the Collector of the Dragon or some higher up in the city wants to smear one of their competitors. Oh, how about... How about... Well, I don't... I don't want the... Mm, I don't want the thing to be... I don't want the thing to be, hey, let's go to this specific quest point, or I'm sorry, this specific plot area. Yeah, I, I don't I don't want the quest to be, hey, go to this plot significant area and go find evidence for me. I want it to be, hey, since you guys are doing something else for me, here's also evidence that Demon's Mill is not what it's supposed to be. 
Like, it's not a direct point at, hey, you should go here and do this thing. It's, okay, we're doing this job. This is also kind of suspicious, but back burner. Ooh, excuse me, big yawn. Perhaps I can hear it from local townsfolk, a local rumor they pick up at the guild. I'm trying to think of something that would, that would, um, give them cause to investigate the area or something that would point a clue in that direction. Oh, hang on, I have an idea. I have an idea. What if there is a what if there is a murder of a land baron? What if there's a murder of a land baron? And while there, what was Demon's Mill? I wasn't here for that part. Ah, uh, uh, Demon's Mill is the location in which the guy who's getting monsters is housing monsters. And that's his, basically his relay point until he smuggles them in through the sewers. Excuse me. Baron has a number of deeds and documents regarding several properties, but one stands out as the deed to the Demon's Mill, and it is marked as A lost cause. There we go. So yeah, so the murdered land baron would have a number of deeds and documents regarding several properties, but one that stands out as the deeds of the demon's mill and has it marked as a lost cause. Or potentially those documents have been stolen. So if the party goes to investigate this murdered land baron, which is, again, not at all related to the Adventurers Guild, just some dude that wanted to make a quick buck, they capture him, get the documents like, hey, why is this location marked as a lost cause? This is kind of weird. This might be looking into later. No one seems to actually own this for some reason. Interesting thing here would be if any player character picks up skills and forgery tools. Yeah, that's yeah. You got to leave solutions like that open. Look at all these quests we have. Look at all this cohesion in our story that we have. It's so good. It's so good. It is all so good. I'm so happy. Uh, we could still add another page of these if we like, but I think this is enough for a major city area for a level five to nine level five. I'm just going to say level five for a level five party to feasibly reach level nine and have enough to go off of to keep their uh, work interesting or to keep the adventure interesting and not have things 
in a railroady fashion. Like, there's a lot of clues that have been breadcrumbed around that can lead to, hey, there's actually a big fucking thing going on and we should do something about it. Or they leave. Or they leave and shit just goes pear-shaped after that happens. That didn't save. Why didn't that save? You bastard. That didn't save. God oh, damn it. Will this be publicly available to look at or just a private thing for your adventures? Uh, I am... I am... Uh, I believe I publicly listed the last one we did when we made uh, the... Oops. When we made the city of Dimsdale. Did I put them in the D&D chat? I did not. Unless I put them in the TTRPG discussion, which, fuck. I don't recall. No, I did not. Uh, these are supposed to be publicly available and I just haven't done them yet. I'll put them in a different server, is what I'll do. I'll put them in a different chat server. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with this. I'm very happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and put the worksheet that I use in there. So that you guys have, enough, so that you guys have this available for yourself. These are always super fun. I love doing these. Okay, hang on. I am doing some stuff here. And it occurs to me that if I do it this way, I'm going to...